At last, the Twins' bats came alive. They beat the Brewers 7-3 to heading into tomorrow's home opener. Let's talk about a Twins win on the Locked On Twins postcast. You are Locked On Twins postcast, part of Locked On Minnesota on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, welcome in on the Locked On Twins postcast. Minnesota wins 7-3 to three to split with the Brewers and move their record to 3-2 and two through their first road trip of the season. I'm Sam Ekstrom. I'm at Sam Ekstrom on X, filling in today for Luke Inman, who has been swamped with Timberwolves work last night. And again, tonight, he'll be on the Wolves postcast. I'm joined by Lou Hennessy, ZoneCoverage.com, Twins writer, also with Twins Daily. He's at Sweet Lou, L-O-U-M-N, on X. Lou, big comeback win for the Twins today. Feels good. Yeah, you know, it's so crazy. I swear I saw a Minnesota twin hit a ball that went over the fence and I kind of forgot what that looked like, but boy, was it refreshing. I, you know, I, I am, I love overreacting. I love overreacting to small sample sizes. I had all the numbers prepared. I was going to rant about the RISP numbers. I was going to rant about the slugging percentage to start the season. I've got those numbers prepared. I think they're still interesting to get into uh, with regard to how bad this offense was for four and a half games, but they break through with a five run seventh inning highlighted by the aforementioned Ryan Jeffers three run bomb. To break a 3-3 tie, Jeffers adds insurance later. Bullpen again lights out. Twins win 7-3. And, and Lou, it feels a whole lot better when the offense objectively sucked for four and a half games. And for to, to be sitting at 3-2 and two, going into the, the first homestand of the season, it, it feels a little better with today's win than if you had kind of you know, sludged your way to a three game losing streak, getting swept by the Brewers. Uh, this is a nice little perspective shift. That's right. And, you know, they were talking about on the broadcast in that last inning there that it doesn't seem like a big difference to be going back home for the home opener three and two versus two and three, but it's a lot happier of a what 45 minute plane ride that they're about to take <laughs> from Milwaukee. So they will gladly take it. I called the offense sleepy yesterday. They were sleepy again for the first few innings this, uh, this time around, but uh, they woke up. Now it's up to them to not hit the snooze button. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, no doubt. Twins uh, entered today. Five of 34 with runners in scoring position. I believe that's under the Mendoza line. They entered today 29th in average at 188 in the league. They were last in baseball's slugging percentage stat, 266, by a pretty wide margin, meanwhile. And I believe they started today 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position as well. And I, I think we hit a, we hit a low when Margot appeared to bunt on his own volition with two outs and the bases loaded in the fourth and then probably got what he deserved in having a challenge overturn that play calling him out at first base um the again the clutch hitting did not start well today for the twins it felt like more of the same and the bunt by Margot was a head scratcher it was and i'm excited to you know, figure out or to have some of the beat reporters, beat reporters go in yeah. and uh, ask around, see what what's going on or what was the deal with that situation right there. Like you said, I, I want to say that was Margot on his own volition doing that. Um, the decision wasn't a great one. If you ask me, I'm, I'm okay with the decision, but the execution was what really failed there. He it's one thing to bunt there. It's another to pop it 12 feet in the air. And it, mm -hmm. the third baseman for what it's worth, Ortiz, he made a killer play on that. Uh, any hesitation there, he doesn't make that play. Uh, obviously it turned into uh, a, a challenge there at first base, uh, but yeah, it's that that was tough to see, especially with two outs, bases loaded. We're trying to scratch something across. I get it, but it's uh, it was it was very frustrating in the moment, and I think uh, Twins Twitter was set ablaze. <laughs> we didn't get a great replay either. Bally Sports kind of gave us a, they gave us like a freeze frame that wasn't exactly at the right moment, so we weren't really sure whether he was safe or out. I sure. I think I, I'm going to take the umpire's word that the throw beat him. I actually thought it beat him in real time. And I felt like he got, he got a pretty favorable call. And I think the right call was made. Uh, so the twins were down one, nothing at that point fell behind two, nothing three, one. And it felt like another sleepy finish against a good Milwaukee bullpen. 
and the wolf, uh, Wolves, the Twins tagged the bullpen for six runs, including five in the seventh. Um, Joel Pamps gave up four consecutive hits in, in the big inning. Alex Kirilov setting the table. He goes four for four in the game, nudges his average close to 500. He doubles. Buxton doubles to drive him in. Correa drives in. Buxton, by the way, Byron Buxton just played five consecutive games, and he looked pretty good doing it. Uh, knock on wood, as I say that. Uh, and then the big the big bomb, Ryan Jeffers, just out of the reach of Yelich in left field. A three-run home run for a guy who had been struggling at the plate this season. Hit 14 homers last year. We knew he had the power. Uh, the most time in season so far. Absolutely. And Jeffers is going to get the headline here for his home run, and rightfully so. It came in a huge spot for him and for the team. Uh, but Alex Kirilov, I can't say enough about him getting four hits today, um, you know, some extra bases. Uh, him sitting at, atop the lineup or in the two hole there for a few games now, it's going to be interesting to see how he can keep producing and hopefully he can snag that spot and really run with it because he's he was awesome today. He, was, he really uh, kept them alive for the most part. And then thankfully uh, Jeffers brought it home. You're talking about Joel Piamps. He came in to face the same three hitters that uh, he was assigned to yesterday and he had an easier time with it. Luckily they had a little bit more of a game plan. And I'm hoping that that's kind of what's going on with this offense here is that still shaking off some rust, which, you know, every team theoretically would be doing that, but um, I, that's wishful thinking maybe on my end, but um, it was, it was refreshing to see them finally break through, especially against a good arm in their bullpen. Yeah, the dam really broke. I mean, the last three innings, they were kind of tattooing the baseball. Kirloff added that triple that, again, didn't come to – he didn't get around to score in the eighth inning, but uh, Kirloff, a home run shy of the cycle in this game. I think that if you're looking for an offensive MVP and a pretty lackluster first five games, it's probably Alex Kirloff. I would definitely say so. And he, uh, not only did he get a, a lot of hits there, but he hit it very hard. And we've seen him uh, when he's healthy and he's really, really crushing the ball. He's a super effective hitter, but uh, it's one that either that wrist or that shoulder or some of his injuries start nagging him and he can't drive the ball is when he really falls into these big slumps. So it's nice to see him feeling healthy. It's nice to see him really driving the ball, even if only one of one or two of them have gone for extra bases so far. Yeah, so the Twins' bullpen, once again, very strong in this game. That was kind of the, the lockdown factor. And once again, after Milwaukee you know, does a little bit of damage against the starter for a second consecutive day, they get shut down late. We'll get into that and Chris Paddock's start as well. We'll also look ahead to the Twins' home opener, all coming up here on the Locked On Twins postcast. We're presented today by Prize Picks. Spring training is over. Baseball season is officially underway. You don't want to miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entry. Prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. The most exciting way to get into the action. You pick more or less than two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Uh, you can get in on the playoff action as well. Uh, coming up here in professional sports, win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a whole new level during basketball's postseason, which begins on April 20th. Uh, prize picks has something for every sports fan, though, whether it's basketball, baseball, League of Legends, anything in between. You've got cross sport entries that you can put together, and it's in more than 30 states in the United States of America. Uh, it, this is the deal that you got to take advantage of. Download the app today. Use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Again, download the Price Picks app. Use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Put together a winning entry today, and let the winnings roll in. Check out their weekly promotions and special offers as well at Price Picks. All right, the bats. Uh, provided the power today for the Twins. Those guys were the heroes, but the unsung heroes would again, I think, be the bullpen for the Minnesota Twins. They entered today, Lou Hennessy, with an ERA of 1.1, second best in baseball. Got off to a rocky start. Daniel Duarte comes in, two pitches, I think, gives up a home run to Jackson Churio, youngest guy in the big leagues. Um, and from that point on, lockdown. Uh, they go the last five and two third or four and two thirds innings or maybe five complete innings actually giving up zero runs. Brock Stewart, Griffin Jack, Stephen Okert, 
Uh, really good work today again for that bullpen. Absolutely. And, you know, I think we have to start off by talking about Brock Stewart. Brock Stewart, beef stew, Brock the Glock, whatever you want to call him. He was electric today with those two strikeouts in the spot where they really needed him. They had just come back into the game here. And so uh, it was really nice to see him really shut that down in his inning. And then Okert at the end of the game, striking out the side. Uh, his fastball didn't look like it was quite there, but that backdoor slider that he was throwing to righties was very effective and he was really nibbling at the corners with it. So it was very encouraging to see. I was very surprised to see Okert warming up for a save opportunity there in the bottom but uh, in the top half of the ninth there, I thought, yeah. are they really going to run with him here? But uh, give credit where credit's due. I know it wasn't a save opportunity, but he came in and he slammed the door shut. Yeah, back to Brock Stewart. I, I was digging on Stewart. I mean, we know how dominant he was last year, but we'll, we'll remind the fans, 0.65 ERA last year. He now has, including today, 31 appearances as a twin. He's allowed a, He's allowed a runner more in one of them. In one out of 31, he allowed two runs on May 29th last year against Houston. Blew a save. In the other 30, scoreless outings. Um, just an, an, a telltale lesson that some baseball players do not always peak when they're young. Brock Stewart peaked when he was 30, 31 years old. He's peaking right now. Kind of a Caleb Thielbar a, a little bit. Like you've got kind of that local angle, um, a reliever that needed to go play independent ball, came back around to play for his hometown team. And he's lights out. He's, you know, at if you look at his body of work the last year, he's one of the best relievers in baseball. I think so. He's turned into quite the buzzsaw for Rocco. And you can, whenever you talk to Rocco about uh, his performance and what he means to this bullpen, Rocco absolutely glows. And you can see why. Um, that fastball has, he's added about six miles per hour in the last couple of years to that fastball, mm -hmm. which is almost unheard of for a lot of guys, especially north of 30. So uh, his development has been absolutely crucial. Now they really need him to stay healthy this year uh, because we saw what a problem he can be for opposing lineups. And uh, it was, they missed him in, when he was gone for those two months at the end of last season. And again, they're patching it together with no Juwan Duran, who is hurt and hopefully back in a couple of weeks. So uh, a little bit of a piecemeal bullpen right now. You know, you're some new bodies, Duarte, um, Okert, but uh, 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 Jay, is it Justin Jackson or Jay Jackson? Jay Jackson, uh, yeah. Jay Jackson that we saw yesterday. Thank you. Um, but the Twins bullpen, again, another stellar outing today. Five innings, one run in the 7-3 win. Uh, let's talk about Chris Paddock. Four innings, two runs, six hits, two walks, two strikeouts, a home run allowed, 82 pitches. Um, I love how he looks on the mound. Unbelievable poise. I love his delivery. Um, I don't always love his location. I didn't love his location today. Um, he was only eight out of or nine out of 18 first pitch strikes. But I think there's a lot of tools that they can work with there. Uh, this is a, a high ceiling arm. I don't think they're going to let him get too deep into games, at least early in this season. So I don't know if we're going to see really his full potential at this point. But I like today's outing from Paddock more than I did um, yesterday with uh, with Louis Varland, I guess. Paddock, you're right. He has incredible mound presence there. Um, and he really, I thought there was only a couple mistake pitches. He was keeping it out of the zone, which someone in his situation and knowing this uh, Brewers lineup, I'm kind of glad that he didn't put too many meatballs out there. One of them that he did got crushed for a home run from Reese Hoskins. Uh, but you're right. He It seemed like first pitch, he was going with that change up a lot and he was keeping it low, which is is uh bittersweet because as you can see you start the count one and oh if they spit on it which the brewers hitters were doing but on the other hand you're keeping it out of that 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 wheelhouse for the hitters but uh yeah i'm okay with the shorter outing today i'm not sure what the plan will be going forward with him um obviously he's going to be under some sort of an innings limit throughout the season that's part of the reason why he's at the back end of the rotation here they can kind of mix and match with him in uh, some of these off days they tried to do that with bailey ober last year and for the most part it worked once it got to i want to say it was august they had or maybe it was around the all-star break last year. They had Ober sit out a couple uh, to try to preserve that arm uh, because the season was going in the right direction. They were hoping to keep him healthy going into October. I'm curious to see if they'll do that same thing with Paddock this year. 
Paddock uh, coaxes two ground balls, six fly balls. Again, two strikeouts, two walks in four innings. Um, labored early. I mean, needed, I think, almost 50 pitches to get through the first two innings. Needed a ground ball double play to get out of the first. And kind of minimized damage like Varlin did the day before. And again, gave the bullpen a chance to shine and kept the offense in the game. Yesterday, the Twins couldn't close the deal offensively. Today, they do with six runs late. They win it 7-3 to three to move their record to 3-2. and two. Um, I, I'd like to to get to some home opener stuff, maybe preview what's ahead for the Twins and, and kind of take a look at the body of work through the first five games. How do we like the, the, the rotation? How do we like the bullpen? How do we like the lineup here in our final segment of the Locked on Twins postcast? And it's brought to you by Game Time. If you want to make your way to the Twins home opener, Check out Game Time, now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. They've got killer last-minute deals, all-in prices that you see right away on the app and views from your seat, plus their lowest price guarantee. Game Time simply takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. Uh, priority last-minute deals save up to 60% off buying last-minute for sports, concerts, comedy, and theater. Zone deals save even more when you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats. And Game Time ticket coverage, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time for a limited time. All users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the Game Time app with code First Pitch. Terms, uh, terms apply. That's code First Pitch for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Lou. Lou Hennessy joining us today on the Locked On Twins postcast at Sweet Lou MN on Twitter slash X. Uh, five games in. Give me your grade on the starting rotation first time through. A, B, C, D, F. Oh boy, that's a tough one. Can I say incomplete? I, uh, you know, it's tricky because we've seen such a mixed bag. I saw some things that we really liked from Pablo Lopez and Joe Ryan. Uh, we saw some things that we didn't like so much from Bailey Ober. And then we saw from Varland and, and, uh, Paddock here, shorter outings where they were flashing some things that made, uh, made us think that they're pretty promising arms coming into this season. Now they need to build off of that. So as far as the total grade, you know, it's hard to say anything higher than a C plus B minus because we did see some really good stuff from the top and we did see some pretty tricky, pretty tricky developments from the bottom. Yeah. And Ober would be the biggest outlier here. Like yes. if Ober goes out and pitches six scoreless, you're saying, well, here we go again. We got, yeah. we got three, three big arms at the top of the rotation. We're set baby. Cause Lopez was great. Ryan was great, uh, but then your number three kind of falls on his face. Your four and five give you four and five stuff. Short outings, not super sharp. You hope to get, um, you know, if you can get through five innings, two runs or fewer allowed more often than not with your four and your five, you're thrilled. That's what they got from Ober a ton last year. Um, and I think the second time through will probably teach us a little bit more. Also, baseball in April is just weird. You know, sometimes you're not in the condition you want to be. The weather can play tricks and 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 present some variables that you're not prepared for. So maybe wait until May to pass the ultimate judgment. Uh, how about the lineup? Uh, the first first road trip of the year, A, B, C, D, or F? Uh, right now, I'm leaning towards C with the lineup. I think it's uh, we started to see some folks waking up. It's nice to see Correa and Buxton having some better at bats this year, looking more comfortable. Um, but there's some key members of this lineup that they're really going to be leaning on, especially in the early going here, that have looked just very turned around. Um, Julian uh, Farmer and um, Margot is having a tough time with it. And I know that they're not, you know, necessarily the, the headliners of this lineup, but they're going to be playing some crucial roles for this team. And uh, they're going to need to get their act together uh, sooner rather than later. It's not just a matter of not landing those hits. It's a matter of not having a, a very comfortable approach at the plate. Um, I know that's always been part of Julian's game. He, he sits, he waits for his pitch. Uh, we saw that today, and he got two fastballs right down the middle. One fouled straight back, and one he whiffed on. So uh, if he's waiting for that pitch, he missed his opportunity. And hopefully it's a it's a learning curve here that he can keep growing and he can uh, keep developing and hopefully get to back get back to that high-water mark that he set last year. 
Yeah, C minus feels apt for this group to their credit. They have shown some clutchness. Um, games one and two of the season, they added runs late. And obviously game five today, they added runs late. And they were threatening yesterday as well. It seems like this is a lineup that's not going to give in. They're not going to to mail it in at any point. So I like that. But you got to be a little more consistent uh, than hitting 188 through the first four games of the season, which they were going into today. Uh, and lastly, bullpen, we've praised them for a full segment today. I mean, I'm giving them an A. I don't know if there's any other grade to give them. Do you agree? I agree. I don't think there's anything else you can say about them. They've really stepped up uh, in some crucial spots here. And we we knew that they were going to be a deeper group this year. We saw them finally go out and land a couple pitchers on uh, you know one-year major league deals, whereas the past few years they really have not invested too much into that bullpen group. But uh, it's I, like you said, I, there's no other grade you can really give them besides A. They've really stepped up. Um, and I would I would agree with that fully. Odds and ends from today's game. I mean, I, I didn't know where to fit this into the conversation. Maybe, uh, you know, the bullpen getting a little help defensively, I guess. But Carlos Correa's Willie Mays basket catch over the shoulder to end the bottom of the seventh inning. Uh, play of the day, I would say, defensively. Yeah, that was awesome. That was killer. And I think he kind of gave the Michael Jordan uh, shrug afterward. It looked like uh, you always feel just so much caution when he's running back like that and an outfielder's running in. We saw a similar play when the team was out in Kansas City where Buxton was coming in, the left fielder was coming in, and Correa were all coming for a, a shallow fly ball. And you're just like, please, please do not touch each other, please. <laughs> and uh, luckily they, they dodged that bullet. One other um, odds and ends factoid. Gary Sanchez, it just feels like he he's become a journeyman after spending all those years with the Yankees. I checked five teams in the last four years for the former Twins catcher. Yankees, Twins, Mets, Padres, and now the Brewers. And he's wearing number 99. I don't feel like you can't wear 99 unless you are like, like a power hitter or like you have to be legit if you're going to wear 99. So I disagree with that, that choice, <laughs> especially considering who he came up with. He came up right beside Aaron judge there. And for a while they were neck and neck with home runs for the first couple of years there. And of course, judge has taken off and Sanchez's <laughs> career, like you said, has gone elsewhere. Uh, twins home first home stand of the year coming up, including tomorrow home opener against Cleveland, 3 PM central. Uh, what are you looking forward to? I think it's going to be a killer pitching matchup tomorrow. Lopez, obviously, the Twins ace on the mound, going against Tanner Bybee, who's one of the most exciting young arms in the American League. I want to say he got second in Rookie of the Year voting last year. Just one of uh, a long line of really good Cleveland pitchers coming from that pitching pipeline that they've developed there. Um, so I think that it's going to be a really fun pitching matchup. Might be a lot, might be a little chilly tomorrow. I think it's upper forties, uh, but so maybe the ball will stay in the ballpark a little bit, especially considering Cleveland's lineup, but uh, I'm looking forward to some sunshine being back at target field. It should be a great day. And like I said, I am, I'm a sucker for pitching matchups. <laughs> Beautiful. And one other fact coming in from the usual postcast host, Luke Inman. He, he's texting. He's watching us on his afternoon off. Ryan Jeffers, when he homers, the Twins 14-0 and over the previous two years. Thank you, Luke, for the tidbit. I did hear that on the broadcast. They were perfect last year when Jeffers homered. He homers today with the big knock to put the Twins ahead for good in the seventh inning. Uh, they win 7-3. to They move to 3-2. and two. Uh, big thanks to Lou Hennessy at Sweet Lou MN. Find his work at zonecoverage.com. And I'm Sam Ekstrom at Sam Ekstrom, uh, doing all sorts of stuff here at Locked On Sports Minnesota. Luke Inman should be back tomorrow on the Locked On Twins postcast. Twins, Guardians in the home opener. Thanks for watching this afternoon on Locked On Sports Minnesota.